It's good to be here this evening. Grateful for the opportunity to worship together and uh, open up God's Word and study and hopefully be encouraged and strengthened as we seek to please Him and serve God Almighty. And so thankful for the opportunity that we have and for the ability uh, that we have to please God that is made possible through His Son, uh, Jesus Christ. He died for us and now intercedes for us in heaven and blesses us with that opportunity that we can have communion with God. And so for that, we are so grateful and thankful, because without that, uh, we would have no hope. And so we're truly grateful for his death and his sacrifice. As we make our preparation for the day when we will stand before God in judgment, kept thinking about uh, the idea of taking a trip. Uh, as we get to uh, fall weather, and summer is amazingly, surprisingly, already behind us, and now we're getting into fall here. Uh, perhaps here this Labor Day weekend, maybe you, some of you are maybe taking advantage to maybe make one last trip. It seems like a lot of people try to do that, do some traveling, take advantage of having the day off of work and school, and uh, maybe uh, grateful for the time you took maybe on a vacation previously this summer, maybe try to extend that a little bit, take an extra day to enjoy yourself. But want to talk about the last trip that we will ever take. There is one final trip that all of us will make. And unlike all the other trips we've ever taken, this one will be outside of our bodies. Uh, it's wonderful to, to travel with the body. Uh, wonderful when, when we are able to be in the body and be able to enjoy the things of this, this world, go to different places, different uh, places of God's creation. And whether it's in this uh, United States or some other country, as some of you have had the uh, ability and, and uh, the opportunity to do that, there is one final trip that all of us will make, and it will be outside of our bodies. And just to emphasize that this is something that we will be conscious of and that we re need to be making preparation for this trip, just want to have some scriptures that we can look at to help us be mindful of the fact that we are all going to take this trip, and we're going to leave the body and we are going to take a trip, and it will be the last one we ever take. So we want to make sure that the destination we go is a place that we want to be. Because you are going to spend eternity there. I am going to spend eternity in this last trip. There is no coming home. There is no coming back. This is final, and this is not a vacation spot. This is where you will spend, and I will spend the rest of our existence. And we need to be ready for that. It's interesting when you look at the death of Jesus Christ, you look at the various passages that tell us what happened when he died. And what is interesting, when we put all the pieces together, we put all the passages and we look at his experience, what we find is that Jesus, just like you and I as human beings, are made up of three parts. We read in Scripture of what happened to Jesus three different ways. And teaching us that Jesus had a body, a soul, and a spirit. And you and I, just like Jesus, also are made up of a body, a soul, and a spirit. And should encourage us to realize that the life that we live is so much more than our bodies. Our bodies make up very, very little of who we truly are. In fact, when we leave this body, it all depends on what we've done with the majority of our existence. And we need to let Scripture teach us and guide us. But I want to look at what happened to Jesus when he died. We read in Luke chapter 23 and verse 46. It says, when Jesus died, it says, Then Jesus, calling out with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Turn over there to Luke chapter 23. And let's back up a little bit and, and, and look at the context. And this is Jesus as he is on the cross. Jesus giving up his life, and his life came to an end, and he blessed us with that sacrifice. It was a perfect life. Jesus is the only individual who ever was tempted, just as we are, yet never committed a single sin, never committed one single act of disobedience, did everything to God absolutely perfectly, and here he's offering that perfect life as a sacrifice for our imperfectness. Truly amazing. What love, what service he would give to us what we desperately lack and what we, what we so desperately need. We need to stand before God without all the imperfections that we have. 
We read here in Luke chapter 23. I want to read beginning in verse 44. Verse 44 of Luke 23 says, It was now about the sixth hour, and darkness fell over the whole land until the ninth hour, because the sun was obscured and the veil of the temple was torn in two. And Jesus, crying out with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. And we see that there was a departure. Because the scripture says that while his spirit went to the Father, his body went somewhere else. Went different places. His body was put in a tomb. It says in Luke chapter 23, if we continue reading verse 52, we find out that his spirit left his body. Spirit went back to the Father and the body goes into the ground. In Luke chapter 23, beginning in verse 50, it says, And a man named Joseph, who was a member of the council, a good and righteous man, he had not consented to their plan and action. A man from Arimathea, a city of the Jews, who was waiting for the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Wait a minute, I thought it said that he went to the Father. Yeah, that was his spirit. His spirit went to the Father, but his body went in the ground. Made up of more than just body, his spirit left. His spirit was still alive, was still in existence. Then we find another passage in the book of Acts. Acts chapter 2, verse 27, talks about his soul. And in Acts chapter 2, verse 27 says, For you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One see corruption. I find that interesting. In the death of Jesus, we find that there were three parts to him. And all three parts took different destinations, if you will. The spirit went to the Father, the body went into the ground, the soul went to the Hadean realm. This is exactly what makes up you and I. You and I are exa in exactly the same kind of trichotomy. We are three parts. Notice in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. It says, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole... Notice, your spirit, your soul, and your body be kept blameless, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. You ever hear the scriptures that emphasize life is more than the body? Absolutely. <laughs> we are more spiritual than we are physical. There is more to us spiritually than there is to our flesh. And yet how much emphasis do we place into this world put on earthly, physical things, the flesh, the body, how much emphasis do you and I sometimes are tempted to emphasize that taking care of, of the physical body and yet we realize one day we're going to leave this body. We're going to take a trip outside of our body. We may have visited wonderful places with the body here and now, but one day we're going to take a final trip outside of that body. We are going to leave it. And want to emphasize how important it is that we emphasize and realize that there is more than meets the eye. Remember the invisible man? The invisible man that was really in existence, you just couldn't see him, and then he puts clothes on, he goes, oh, wait a minute, there's someone there. There's someone there. Well, that's like outside the body, we're still, there's still the existence of a spirit. There's a spiritual individual, but in the body, that's when you see that invisible person is in the body. You see it animated. You, in other words, when you see me, there's a great quote that says, when you see me, you don't see the real me that makes me me. What you are looking at right now, you don't see the real me that makes Daniel me. You're looking at Daniel's body. This, indivis this in in invisible inner person is who Daniel really is. Now we can see evidences of that and how you see my body behave and what my body does and there will be evidences what that inner person is made up of. We get glimpses of it, but the inner person is going to go on and is going to leave the body. The body is the house. And that's all you and I are seeing. We're just seeing the house. We don't get to actually see the real person. We're just wearing the physical clothing, if you will, that houses that spirit. Notice, it, notice in Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7, it talks about the union of the body and the soul. That when God made a body, it was inanimate. It wasn't until God breathed into his nostrils that he became alive. And the soul, he became a living soul, it says in Genesis 2 verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. I notice Genesis chapter 3 and verse 19 reminds Adam, for you are dust, and to dust 
You shall return. The body's going to go back to the dust. But guess what happens? When the body goes to the dust, you're still alive. The spirit is still in existence. It's just left the body. And James chapter 2, verse 26 says, For as the body, apart from the spirit, is dead, so also faith, apart from the works, is also dead. So the body is unable to be animated, is unable to live without the spirit, without the soul. When the soul leaves, that body goes to the dust, returns to the ground, but the spirit goes on. Notice Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 7 says, And the dust returns to the earth as it was, and the spirit, that's the real you. The spirit is the real you that makes you you, not your body. You, we do not see what makes us who we are. This is temporary. Let's not get so caught up in our bodies. Let us not get caught up in what you see in the flesh because that is temporary. It's going in the ground and your spirit is going to then pay the consequences or reap the rewards for what you did in your bodies. We're going to look at several passages of Scripture that emphasize how important it is that we use our bodies in one specific way, and that is to glorify the God who created us and ultimately not just gave us a body, but gave us the real us, the spiritual individual, the spirit, the soul, and that we care for that, that we let life breathe into it through the gospel and through Scripture, that we let Christ dwell in our hearts through faith. And so we are going to take a final trip. And I want to just make three simple points about this final trip. To make this final trip a success, where well, we are all going to make sure this is a place where we want to be. I would suggest for our final trip that we pack light. You ever notice how sometimes you, you, you're cramming everything you can into the trunk of the car? I mean, you ever see people, they've got, maybe you've got one of these uh, nice little additions to your van. Uh, you've got compartment space you can put on top there. It's, it's wonderful when you see that. People, oh boy, they must be going on a real long trip. Must be having a great time. We've got to put extra stuff on top of the van and on top of the cargo. I would suggest that you not get so caught up in all the things that we could have here and now and pack light. Because you're not going to take a whole lot with you. <laughs> in fact, the only thing you're taking with you is what you do to that inner person. What you did to prepare and what you clothed that in a person of the scriptures tell us that we can put some clothing on and we can pack some clothing. But I want to tell you, you don't need to have all kinds of duffel bags and all kinds of extra suitcases. You only need one outfit. You and I only need one change of clothes and it is to put on Jesus Christ. Put him on right now and you pack light. You make sure that that's the one thing you're taking with you. It's the only thing that's going to last. The only thing that's going to last eternity. Everything else is going back to the ground. Romans 13, verse 14 says, But put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. In other words, it says, Let's not get so caught up in adorning and taking care of this physical being. Why? Because it's going to go to the dust. It's going to go to the ground. So you better pack light. That is, you better emphasize just a few things. Is that what your life looks like? What is in the suitcase of your eternal trip? What are you packing? What are you planning to put in there? We better be prepared. And the only thing that really matters is whether or not we are dressed to meet the Lord. <coughs> dressed and clothed with Christ. Not emphasizing the things of this life. Turn over to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. So many passages emphasize and, 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 and encourage us to be thinking more of the inner man. Over and over again, we read passage after passage that says, Stop emphasizing the body. The, the Christian mindset, when we put on Jesus Christ, that's what putting Jesus Christ on really is. It's re-emphasizing what it is we are to be uh, taken care of. It says, yes, we... we we still have an obligation, yes, certainly, to, to, to manage our, our health and to manage ourselves physically. We have an obligation to be good stewards of that. But we are not to be so overemphasis of these things that we forget to manage what truly matters. And the Scriptures constantly remind us of that because we need to have that focus. Turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and re just read a few verses there. We notice it uses the phrase, the inner man. That's the real you. That's who's taking the trip, not your body. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 
In fact, the body is going to be changed. And it's going to be raised up and it's going to be given a spiritual body. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, there in verse 13, it says, But having the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believe, therefore I spoke. We also uh, believe, therefore we also speak, knowing that he who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and will present us with you. For all things are for your sake, so that the, the grace which is spreading to more and more people may cause the giving of thanks to abound for the glory of God. Notice he says, therefore we do not lose heart, but though our outer man is decaying, yet our inner man is being renewed day by day. Is that true for you? What are you renewing? It says the body. We may do all kinds of things to take care of this body. You know what's amazing? You see all kinds of famous people who should not look the way that they look as they age. You see all kinds of famous people. They, say, they look ten times better. And this photographer that I've seen them walking down the red carpet, I was wait a minute, aren't they? They look better than they were when they were in their 20s and their 30s. No, their body is decayed. <laughs> they, they, they've done some things that make it look like it's not. But your body is decaying. And we can do all that we want to pre prevent that from people seeing that or from people getting the impression that we are aging or we're getting older. But you know what this passage says? It says the body is getting, it's going into decay. But what about your inner man? You can make that better. You can improve the inner man. The inner man can be more beautified. The inner man can be better and cleaner and more youthful, more energetic, more lasting. The inner person. Is that what you're packing up? Is that what you're making sure you're, is in your, your spiritual suitcase, your luggage? That's what this passage says. It says, remember that we are going to be raised up. The physical body is decaying. And as much as we want to halt that and stop that and prolong it, we can't do it. But the spiritual inner person can be more beautiful, can be beautified, can be enhanced if we work on it, if we emphasize it. That's what he says. Though our outer man is decaying, yet our inner man is being renewed. Are you putting on the face mask of your inner, your inner beautiful face? Are you taking care of that? Or are we focused a little bit too much sometimes on making sure we're taking care of this outer body that one day it's going to, going to die? But we can renew every day the inner person. Notice Proverbs 20. Proverbs chapter 20. Proverbs chapter 20, beginning in verse 26. It says, A wise king winnows the wicked and drives the threshing wheel over them. The spirit of man is the lamp of the Lord, searching all the innermost parts of his being. The Lord looks at the heart. The Lord looks at that inner person, that inner being. Are we taking care of that? Are we renewing that? Are we caring about that? That's what's going on. That's what's going to last. We better care for it. We better take care. Uh, make, make, make great pains to make sure it's in proper working condition because that's the only thing we're going to have. How about Ephesians chapter 3? Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 14 says, For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with power through his Spirit in the inner Man, that we would be strengthened with power through His Spirit and the inner man. Now, I, 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 can, I can go and I can, I've, I've got a, a membership. I've got to take advantage of it at uh, Anytime Fitness. I can go and work there anytime. I can go there right now and I can work out. I can pump some iron. I decided not to. I decided to pump some, some Bible iron here with you all. <laughs> I mean, that, I'm, I'm doing that kind of workout. I know maybe my body doesn't, doesn't get a whole lot of <laughs> My physical body may not. It wouldn't be great if we could actually do both at the same time. That'd be wonderful. <laughs> get, get some advantage of that. But no, we are here to emphasize strengthening our inner person. The inner person needs to be made strong. We need to do that. Well, it is good to exercise. It is good to be working on our health. 
One day nothing we do will prevent it from going away. How strong is your inner being? Notice Matthew 6 and verse 25. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? When we look at several passages and say, well, what are we made up of? What makes us us? We are body, soul, and spirit. That tells me we must be, we better emphasize our lives being much more than the body, much more than food and clothing. But isn't it interesting how so much of our lives tend to center around that thing, going grocery shopping and working to make sure we're clothed and we're fed and we need all those things. But one of these days, we're not going to need any of that. We're not going to need to go to the grocery store. We're not going to need to go to the pharmacy. We're not going to need any of those things. And where is your spiritual being? Where is the inner person? Is it sick? Is it even alive? Is it ready to go on this trip? I want to talk about an individual very briefly of someone who did emphasize food and clothing most of their life. We read about this individual in Luke chapter 16. You know what the Bible says about the rich man? It emphasizes two things, and he neglected the most important. It said, this man dressed well and ate well all the time. He ate well, and he dressed well every day. And you know what? That was his emphasis. His emphasis on what he looked like and what his food tasted like. <laughs> he wanted good food, and he wanted to look good while he ate it. <laughs> and he did. And then you know what happened to his body? It went in the ground. It says his body was buried, and guess what? His inner person woke up, and it was in torment. He took a trip. And he wanted to go back. He wanted, he wanted to change up. He said, I don't like this. I think I want a detour. Abraham said, no detours, son. No detours. You are on a one-way trip. And that's why we need to emphasize taking care of our spiritual bodies. Emphasizing our spiritual well-being. And not get caught up in the physical body. Look at Luke chapter 16. Just read that. Luke 16 and verse 19. It says, Now there was a rich man, and he, he habitually dressed in purple and fine linen, joyously living in splendor every day. And a poor man named Lazarus was laid at his gate covered with sores and longing to be fed with the crumbs which were falling from the rich man's table. Besides, even the dogs were coming and licking his sores. Now the poor man died and was carried away by the angels to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died, notice, and was buried. What was buried? His body. The body that ate well and the body that looked good. It was buried. And his soul was living on the real man that made the rich man him. Now he pays the price. In Hades, he lifted up his eyes being in torment and saw Abraham far away and Lazarus in his bosom. You know what's so amazing to me about this particular parable? I would, there's so many times I wish there were visuals that, that we could just kind of see what the people look like, or see the reaction of the people when Jesus spoke to them. This is one of those occasions because I would have loved to see the looks on the people's faces when he's telling the story because most people believed that when you dressed well and you ate well, that was a sign that God was with you. That was a blessing because of you had God's favor upon you. And if you were sick, if you were uh, destitute, if there was something wrong with you, it was a sign that there must have been some sin you committed. Isn't that what they thought about the blind man? Remember that poor individual, that blind individual, born blind? And what did they say? Who sinned? This man or his parents? And he would have to live a life like that. You know why I love? I wish I could see the people's reactions as Jesus tells his story because he pulls a fast one on. He says, I want to tell you about a rich man who died and a poor man who died. I guess what they're thinking, oh, yeah, the poor man died. We know where he went. And I know where the rich man went. And Jesus says, nope. <laughs> guess where the rich man went? Oops. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> he's, not, he's, not a, he's not a paradise. Guess where the poor beggar went? He went to, he's covered, he's, he's blessed. Yeah. And isn't that interesting how so many people today, they still think that way. There's so many people that believe, if I am doing well with my job and the money and the clothes, well, I must be all right with God. This parable should make us pause about that. As good as we may be doing physically, 
We neglect the inner man and you pay the price. Regardless of how well that physical outer person is doing. There is no correlation. That's the lesson of Job. What did you do, Job? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Come on. No. And so we need to make sure that we do not get tricked into that same mindset. That we can very easily neglect our inner person when we see outwardly as things like things are going great. Don't neglect the inner person, the inner man, because that's what goes on. That's what lives on. So let's pack light. Let's make preparation. Don't we, don't we prepare to go on trips? How about you? You ever go on Priceline? You ever double check, make sure you get the greatest deal on hotels, travel? I don't know many, many, many people that show up at the airport. Well, I'm going on a trip. Let's see what airport I want to, airline I want to take. Usually do a little bit of planning, look ahead, figure it out, get the best way there. Well, I want, to take the, I want to take the best way on this trip. I want to make some preparation. The Bible says we need to be prepared. We prepare by obeying the gospel. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. That's how you take the luggage you're taking with you. You have to put on Christ. Turn to Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. And let's start reading in verse 1. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 1 says, Therefore, if you have been raised up with Christ, keep seeking the things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of of God and commends us that when we are baptized into Christ, you have made the right mode of preparation. You have, you have chosen the right transport because in Christ you are going to be blessed and that inner man is going to be clothed properly so that when it leaves the body, it is prepared to be presented before God who will inspect us. Every one of us will stand before the judgment seat of Christ and he will review what we've done, what in the body. Those things, whether they be good or bad, and it is the inner person, the inner man that we fuel, that we teach, that we instruct, that we strengthen, that then dictates how I live in this body. That's what Christianity is all about, is making sure we're feeding that inner man with the scripture so that we live in this outer body in the proper way, so we're ready to go, ready to make the trip. But let's keep reading. He says, so what we have to do in verse 2, he says, we need to set your mind on the things above. Stop looking at this world. Stop looking at the things that our bodies uh, enjoy in this world. Not on the things that are on earth. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ who is our life is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. Therefore, consider the members of your earthly body as dead. We've got to put to death the desires of our bodies. Immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, greed, which amounts to idolatry. For it is because of these things that the wrath of God will come upon the sons of disobedience. Is that sad? So many people live their lives focusing just on the outward, just on the body. And then guess what? The body dies and the inner person pays the price for what their body did. Christian can be saved from that, can be saved by having the inner man reborn again and have all the focus on things above so that we train our bodies and we discipline our bodies to use our bodies properly, not selfishly for our own selfish ambitions and our impulsive desires, but for God's glory. And that is the only way to properly be prepared for the trip. Are we prepared? Are we making preparation? Are we glorifying God in our bodies? Notice what he says in verse 9. Do not lie to one another, since you laid aside the old self with its evil practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed to a true knowledge according to the image of the one who created him, a renewal in which there is no distinction between Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave and freeman, but Christ is all and in all. So what do we look like? What does the body then become? Well, we'll read verse 12. This is what then the body looks like. This is what we look like outwardly. So as those who have been chosen of God, holy and beloved, put on a heart of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving each other, whoever has a complaint against anyone, just as the Lord forgave you, so also should you. I'll just tell you one simple word that I see there. 
Did you know how the body changes when we feed the inner man and we clothe the inner man properly in Christ? The outer body looks like a servant. A servant to the needs of others and not ourselves. We put to death all selfish ambition. That we then have a new mindset, which is all the things that we do should be for the glory of God and we glorify God in our bodies by using our bodies to serve. He says, put on kindness, be kind to one another. Gentleness, be considerate of other people. Think about how uh, certain behavior affects others before we think about ourselves. Be the ultimate servant. Be patient with others. Be forgiving to others. In verse 14, beyond all these things, put on love. Love, translation in the Bible, means service. Anytime you see that word in Scripture, you automatically just substitute service. Service is the Bible way of love. Bible love means put others above ourselves. And there in verse, notice verse 15. What then do we look like? Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts to which indeed you were called in one body. And be thankful. You know what it says? Regardless of whatever our bodies are going through, whether our bodies are muscular and strong and beautiful or decaying and sick and, 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 and having troubles, having issues, regardless of whatever the condition of the body is, you can be thankful because you're not thinking about what your body is doing. <laughs> your body becomes, really, and the scripture tells us what the body becomes. For the Christian, it becomes a temple. We need to look at our bodies as a temple, a place of worship. Where God and the Spirit dwells and we serve God in that capacity. That the body is a place where God dwells and we worship. Let him dwell in us. Not serving ourselves. And in that case, then, yes, we can be thankful. We can rejoice regardless of what's going on with our bodies. Verse 17. Whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus what do we do then? Give thanks through him to God the Father. In other words, when my body gets sick and I'm suffering and there's a nurse and there's a doctor, there's someone in the bed next to me, if I'm using my body to serve, encourage these individuals in my room to think about Scripture, to let them know the God who I love, to let them know the God who I can't wait to be with when I leave this body, I can be thankful in that condition. It's certainly not pleasant, and I certainly have prayers that my body will recover, but even while I wait for those prayers, I can still be thankful. That's what Paul is telling us. He says in the Philippian letter, whether I am abundantly blessed or I'm in want, I've learned the secret to all things, to be content. And he said, when I'm content, I rejoice because I'm not focused on the body. I'm focused on being a servant. My body becomes a temple of the Holy Spirit. Turn to Romans chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, before we look at that passage, 1 Corinthians 6 verse 20 says, For you were bought with a price, so glorify God in your body. We glorify God in our body again by training our bodies to remember we are servants. We are servants. Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12 verse 1 says, Therefore I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice, acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. A holy sacrifice. Did you, let's emphasize that. My life is to be a life of sacrifice. What am I sacrificing? What I want to do. What I think would be good for me. I'm sacrificing all of that for then ultimately the good of others. God first and others second. What are the two great commandments? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Knocks ourselves down a couple notches. And if we try to aim at that, ever hear someone say, I don't, I don't have time for this, I don't have time for that. 
When you start aiming God as your center and others to go around it, we start realizing we don't have as much time for our own desires because other things have taken priority. Does that look like the way you are preparing? I need to examine myself. I need to ask the question. Is that what I'm striving for? Is that what I'm looking for? I can very easily get distracted. I appreciate how honest Paul is. Paul is very honest. Paul honestly says, I, he, he talks about his struggles. You know what Paul said he had to do with his body? He said, I have to discipline this thing. I work at it. Lest what happens? Lest after I preach to others and I myself become disqualified because I forgot that this body is temporal and I've put too much emphasis on it. He says, I have to discipline that body. I have to, I have to make it. He says, I make it my slave. Romans 12 is telling us what that is about. It's about making sure I put this in front of my physical eyes and feed that spiritual mind. Because this world that we live all around us does not tell us that. We will not get that message from the world we live in. We need to be renewed properly and let the Spirit of God remind us, encourage us. Certain. I just want to read that passage very quickly. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27. 1 Corinthians 9, verse 27. It says, I discipline my body and make it my slave, so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified. When I read that, at least for me, for me personally, it says I've got a lot of work to do even after I preach this lesson. I could sit up here and say all this, and I could still get too caught up in this physical world. And then the real Daniel pays the price for being too caught up in the physical things of this world. And Paul says we've got to have that mindset. We've got to realize we've got to, we've got to work at it. We've got to discipline our minds, discipline ourselves that we don't get caught up in this world. And for the Christian, the body becomes a temple. Turn to 1 Corinthians 6. If we're already there, look down, look at verse 17. Let's back up a little bit. 1 Corinthians 6 and verse 17. It says, But the one who joins himself to the Lord is one spirit with him. Flee immorality. Every other sin that a man commits is outside the body, but the immoral man sins against his own body. Or do you not know? That your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and that you are not your own. I fail to think about that. I fail to discipline my life and execute that. And guess what? When the body dies, the real me pays the price. The rich man I had to learn that. And Jesus gave us that lesson so that we would not follow the same path. Now, this is the last trip you're ever going to take. And not any other trip is a trip that needs planning, needs packing, and we need preparing. How are you planning? How are you packing? How are you preparing? It's not worth putting these things off. If you have not become a Christian, if you have not put on the Lord Jesus Christ, you are not ready to take this trip. And the sober reality is you could take that trip sooner than you plan on. You can't say, well, I plan on taking that trip oh, years down the road. There is no guarantee that you might have to make that trip tonight. Didn't Jesus say that to somebody who was not planning for that trip? He was planning on all the things of this life. He said, oh, soul, you have so many goods. I know what I'll do. I'll big, build bigger barns. And what did Jesus say? You fool, this night your soul will be required of you. Never entered his mind that he was going to make a trip and leave the body. And his soul would go on. And he was not ready. 
You can be ready tonight and you can pack appropriately. Put on the clothing that is necessary. Be baptized in water. Putting on the Lord Jesus Christ. Repenting of your sins. Being forgiven of your sins. And clothing yourself in him. And make it your goal to every day be renewed in the spirit of the inner mind to realize that you are going to dedicate and discipline your thinking to be a servant, to be a giver and not a taker. To be one who thinks of others and puts the Lord above everything else. Are you ready to make that trip? And those of us who have made preparation, have we gotten sidetracked? Are we adding too much into our suitcase that doesn't need to be there? Is it overcrowding the only one necessary thing that should be there? And the Lord Jesus Christ and clothing that and making sure that is prepared. But whatever the case may be, we want to be prepared. And whatever you need to do, if you need to make changes in your life as a Christian, we encourage you to do that. And if you need to become a Christian, we encourage you to do that tonight. We're going to stand and sing a song of encouragement. And as we do, we encourage you to come to the front and obey the gospel while together we stand and sing this hymn.